Praise the Lord. Such a joy to worship the Lord together. Before we start to worship the Lord, shall we pray? Loving Heavenly Father, Maker of heaven and earth, King of kings and Lord of lords, we come before your throne to worship you. We acknowledge that you are the King, you are the Lord. You are master of everything, Lord, the sovereign God. Father, Lord, as we worship you, help us to worship. Lord, from our hearts, help us to understand, comprehend your greatness. Help us, Lord, to worship you, understanding the greatness, the love, the mercies that flow from you, Lord. We humble ourselves in your presence as we magnify and glorify your name. Lord, we pray that you will break every yoke. The word says the anointing will break the yoke. Deliver your people, Lord, from whatever hardship, whatever problem, whatever trouble they're going through, Lord. Come at them into your precious hands. Give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name. Oh Lord, glory to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name. Oh Lord, glory to your name. Oh Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. In several places in the Bible we read about God's right arm. There is no safer place than the hands of God. We're going to praise and worship the Lord and thank God for all that He is to us. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all alarms Leaning, leaning Leaning on the everlasting arms what a fellowship, what a joy divine Leaning on the everlasting arms What a blessedness, what a peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all alarms Leaning Leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms Oh, how sweet to walk 
in this pilgrim way leaning on the everlasting arms oh how bright the path grows from day to day leaning on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms oh how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way leaning on the everlasting arms oh how bright the path grows from day to day leaning on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms what have i to dread what have i to fear leaning on the everlasting arms i have blessed peace with my lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms what have i to dread what have i to fear leaning on the everlasting arms i have blessed peace with my lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms when we read the word it's so wonderful how jesus went in search of people when the jews had nothing to do with the samaritans jesus made it a point to cross through samaria he is a god who breaks every barrier breaks every barrier we live in a world where there are so many differences so many barriers between people man made jesus came to break it all the woman at the well was thirsting for relationship all she found was broken and jesus met her at the well and he quenched her thirst if we will believe as we sing this song the lord will quench that thirst that is there within us because he is the living water shall we sing fill my cup lord i lift it up lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul bread of heaven feed me till i want no more fill my cup fill it up and make me whole fill my cup lord i lift it up lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul bread of heaven feed me till i want no more fill my cup fill it up and make me whole like the woman at the well i was seeking for things that could not satisfy and then i heard my savior speaking draw from my well that never shall run dry fill my cup lord lift it up lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul bread of heaven feed me till i want no more 
fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. There are millions in this world who are craving the pleasure the earthly things afford. But none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ my Lord. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up and make me whole So my brother, if the things this world give you Leave hungers that won't pass away My blessed Lord will come and save you If you kneel to Him and humbly pray Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord Come and quench this thirsting of my soul Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Our God is so big, He's so wonderful, He's so great. And we try to comprehend Him with our brains. And so often we come to wrong conclusions about God. We need to read the Word to find more about God. He has revealed Himself in His Word. Let's sing this wonderful song. We have a great big wonderful God, a God who loves us so much that He came down to earth, He gave His life for us on the cross. Let's praise and worship Him. We have a great big wonderful God, we have a great big wonderful God. A God who loves every one of us, done so much for all of us, a great big wonderful God. A God who loves every one of us, cares so much for all of us, a great big wonderful God. He never, never, never leaves us, He's always standing by. To pick us up when we stumble, we are the apple of His eye. We have a great big wonderful God. We have a great big wonderful God A God who loves every one of us Cares so much for all of us Great big wonderful God A God who loves every one of us Cares so much for all of us Great big wonderful God We got a great big wonderful God We got a great big wonderful God A God who's always victorious Always watching over us Great big wonderful God a God is always victorious, always watching over us. Great big wonderful God. He never, never, never leaves us. He's always standing by to pick us up when we stumble. We are the apple of His eye. We have a great big wonderful God. We have a great big wonderful God A God who loves every one of us Done so much for all of us Great big wonderful God A God who loves every one of us Cares so much for all of us Great big wonderful God We have a great big wonderful God We have a great big wonderful God Oh what a glory it is to sing Praises to the coming King A great big wonderful God Oh, what a glory it is to sing praises to the coming King, a great big wonderful God. He never, never, never leaves us, always standing by 
pick us up when we stumble We are the apple of His eye We have a great big wonderful God We have a great big wonderful God A God who loves every one of us Cares so much for all of us Great big wonderful God A God who loves every one of us Cares so much for all of us Great big wonderful God Shall we look to the Lord in prayer before we listen to the word of God? Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to read and meditate your word. You are a God who speaks to us, Lord. Speak to us. Open our ears and our hearts to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 8, we read like this. How may I put curses on him who is not cursed by God, how may I be angry with him with whom the Lord is not angry? From this day forward, for a few weeks, we are going to meditate on a new series. It's called Balaam and the Church. In the book of Numbers from chapter 22 to 24, we read about a man called Balaam. This man, a so-called prophet, was called by the king of Moab to come and curse the people of God. The scene is like this. The children of God, the descendants of Abraham, were delivered from Egypt and they were marching forward. As they marched forward close to the kingdom of Moab, the king of Moab started to panic. He was afraid that these people would come and destroy their land or take over their land. But Moab's king did not have the strength to confront the people of God. So he decided to do something very different. He went in search of a man called Balaam. And he said this, Numbers chapter 23 verse 7, Come, put curses on Jacob for me and be angry with Israel. This king thought that Balaam had the power to bless or curse anyone. That is what he believed. So he went and approached Balaam, who started on his journey to come and curse the children of God. Whenever God blesses us, whenever we get a promotion, whenever we grow in society, there are always a group of people who are jealous about our growth. Some people, they will fight openly when they see the growth of another person. Some people will ignore it. They will be hurt, they will ignore them and they will go on. But there are some people who would want to damage that person to see that that person's growth is stopped. So they do so many things. You know, some of them will spread lies about you. They will slander your name. They will go and spread rumors and gossip about you. That is a few people. But there are a few people who will try to do harm, like how the king of Moab tried to do. He went and engaged this man called Balaam. He was a prophet. The king promised to give Balaam money to come and put a curse on these people so that because of the curses, the king of Moab thought he would overcome the children of God. Now, I place before you these two words. One is blessing, the other is a curse. What is a blessing and what is a curse? Both are words that are spoken over other people. You know, when you bless, I bless you. I say that you will do very well in life. That's a word of blessing. The word of curse is you will never come up in life. You will always be in lack and want. That's a curse. The difference between this and the normal words that are spoken is that the blessing and the curse is empowered by something supernatural. It is either empowered by God or it is empowered by Satan. 
Now let me give you an example of blessing and a curse. When you look at Genesis chapter 22 and verse 18, and your seed will be a blessing to all the nations of the earth because you have done what I gave you orders to do. This is right after Abraham decided to obey the word of God. He was willing even to sacrifice his only son. After which the Lord says these words. He says, your seed or your descendants will be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. Because you have done what I gave you orders to do. When Abraham obeyed the Lord, that is when God pronounced this blessing upon Abraham. You know, so many generations of Abraham have suffered like no one else on earth, but no one has been able to destroy them until this date. That is because of the blessing of God that was pronounced upon Abraham. Now, this is a beautiful example. Not only that, the same verse it says, your descendants will be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. What does this mean? It refers to the Lord Jesus Christ who came as a descendant of Abraham through whom all of this earth is blessed today. Anyone who believes in Jesus is saved. Let me give you another example of a curse. We know the man of God, the prophet Elijah. There was a man who came to Elijah. His name was Naaman. He was a Syrian commander, but he had a problem. He had leprosy. And when he heard that if he could go to Elisha, he could be healed. So he came to him and he was expecting the prophet to come out and touch him and pray for him and heal him. But he didn't do that. Elisha told him, go to Jordan, the river, and dip yourself seven times. That was what the prophet told Naaman. Now when he did that, when Naaman obeyed that, he got healed of his leprosy. And he came back to Elijah and he said, I want to give you these offerings. I want to give you this. I want to give you that. I want to give you gifts. Elijah said, I will not take anything from you. I don't want anything from you. Subsequently, Naaman left. When Naaman went some distance, the servant of Elijah, Gehazi, he wanted to get those gifts. So he ran behind Naaman and told him, my master has sent me to you to take the gifts that you wanted to give him. And Naaman was more than happy to give it to him. He took it, he went and kept it in his house and Gehazi came back and stood before the prophet. Now Elijah asks him, where did you go? And this man smartly says, I did not go anywhere. Now Elisha says, your heart was not right. You're not, your heart was not with me. So what is going to happen? Because you did something that you should not do. You have disobeyed God. You have been greedy. So the leprosy that left Naaman will cling to you and your descendants. And that was a curse. Now, the word says in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 27 and 28, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am giving you today. But a curse if you disobey these commandments. So blessing and curses are a result of our obedience or disobedience to God and his word. Now, when Balaam started from his place, God told him in the first place not to go. But still he insisted and he traveled. You know what happened on the way? Numbers chapter 22 verse 22 it says, At this the anger of the Lord flared up against Balaam because he was leaving. So the angel of the Lord stood in the way to oppose him. Now whenever someone begins to hate God's people, when someone decides to curse the people of God, you know what happens? God starts to oppose him. God starts to oppose him. 
And we know, we know that when God will oppose a person, he has no chance of survival. He has no chance of survival if God will stand up against a person. Now God in his grace permitted Balaam to go forward, but he warned him that he would only speak what God would tell him to speak. Now once he reached Moab, this is what Balaam said. Balaam told Balak, build for me here seven altars and prepare here for me seven bulls and seven rams. If you can picturize this, seven altars, seven sacrifices, it looks very grand, it looks very pleasing, but you cannot do any of this to change the heart of God. This is what Balaam was trying to do. He was trying to get God to change his mind so that he could curse the children of God. And that is when, in Numbers chapter 23 and verse 8, Balaam, instead of cursing, he said these words, How may I put curses on him who is not cursed by God? How may I be angry with him with whom the Lord is not angry? Understand one thing. No man, no man can curse those whom God has blessed. As we walk in life, we come across certain people who know nothing but to curse. And some of the curses that they spoke against us for no reason keeps ringing in our ears, keeps bothering us in our hearts. What should I do? I'm afraid. Maybe it will come true. Maybe something wrong or bad will happen to me. Maybe something will go wrong with my children. Let me point out one verse to you. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2. The verse says, Don't worry when someone curses you for no reason. This is the word of God. And this is prophetic towards a few people who are listening to this message. The word says, don't worry when someone curses you for no reason. Nothing bad will happen. Such words are like birds that fly past and never stop. These words are like birds that fly and never stop. It cannot cause you any harm because there is no legitimate reason or nothing wrong that you have done that they have spoken these words against you. And as a New Testament believer, as a man who is saved by Christ, as a man whose sins are forgiven, what is our stand? Book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, Paul writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ, God has given us every spiritual blessing in heaven. It means, as long as we are obedient to Christ, no curse can come upon us. Take this very clearly into your heart. As long as we are obedient to Christ, and as long as we remain in Christ, no curse can come upon us. So we need not fear when people curse us without a reason. Instead, you know what God will do? God will turn those curses into blessings. Now, what is the basis on which I say these words? If you will be obedient to God, if you will be under the protection of God, if you will be always right in your work, in the things that you do, God will turn every curse that is spoken upon you as a blessing. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 5, we read like this, Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God Love thee. Now we are loved more than anyone else. And that is the reason why God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place. So let me tell you this. If you are in Christ, you are blessed. And no curse in no way can come and harm you.
God bless you. Shall we pray? Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. How can someone curse when God's blessings rest upon us at this time, Lord Jesus? I pray for all of those who listened to this message. I pray that God's blessings, the riches that God has promised those who believe in Jesus will come to pass, will come true in the lives of your people. And all the fears because of the curses spoken upon them will leave right now in Jesus' name. Your people will be blessed. They are blessed. They will continue to be blessed. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.